1570, WWNN, Pompano Beach, WKIS HD3, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. It might be the door alarm, or the new safety drain covers, the pool fencing, even the swim lessons. But the fact is, you can never know which safety step will save a life, until it does. Adding multiple safety steps to your safe pool practices can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. A public service message from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, the American Red Cross, and YMCA of the USA. AM 1470, with more of what you need to know. Listen for the latest in nutritional facts on Food for Thought with Kelly Ruth, Mondays at noon on AM 1470, WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to Kiss My Biz, your weekly reality business show, where each week a business owner joins our good cop and bad cop duo looking for real but informative business solutions and resources to grow your business. Our good cop, Claude Jenkins, has a diverse career ranging from government, corporations, and management consulting. He is the Vice President of Operations at Global Business Development Center and a guardian angel for most businesses. Annette Gray, a.k.a. Bad Cop, is the President and Owner of Global Business Development Center. She has 20 years experience in management, economic development, and marketing in the private and public sector. She is passionate about developing entrepreneurs. Let's join our dynamic duo as they place another business owner in the hot seat and find out if they are ready to kiss their business with love. Or is today the day they kiss their business goodbye? Good evening and welcome to the Kiss My Biz show. I am Annette Gray. I am your bad cop. And as you know, for the past few weeks, I have been double, pin double hit, pinch hitting, pinch hitting, right? Baseball term? Who knows? Um, for our good cop... <laughs> Production is already looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, for our good cop, Claude Jenkins, who I have to say is uh, continues to uh, recover nicely. He is just not well enough to be with us yet. So I will continue to play both roles, good cop and bad cop. Um, don't forget to give us a call with any questions or comments. And um, you can reach us at 888-565-1470. And today, uh, or this week, I at the Global Business Development Center, we are now taking applications for our Kidpreneur Camp, which is ages 11 through 16, and our Young Adult Youth Cultural and On-the-Job Training uh, Program, and that is ages 17 to 21. So give us a call at the office or visit us at www.globalbusinessdevelopmentcenter.com. Com. I should also mention that the youth program, we do provide interns to cultural organizations, small businesses. So if you're interested in having an intern for this summer, please also give us a call and um, we can provide you with an application. Uh, those interns are paid by us via stipend and a grant. And so you get to have young, fresh, creative brains around you for this summer um, at no cost to you. So you can um, call us at the office 561-894-4500 or hop on our website www.globalbusinessdevelopmentcenter.com. If you are not listening us to us live at the station, you can also listen to the show live at um, www.globalbusinessdevelopmentcenter.com. And you want me to repeat that phone number again? It's 561-894-4500. So I'm excited to have in the studio with us this week um, a local attorney and uh, a recent sponsor of our show. If you've been listening to the show, um, you do know that um, we have been sponsored the past few months by Mr. Alteron Phillips Esquire. 
and he's in the studio with us this week and um, I always love beating up on attorneys um, because they can take it and they can dish it right back welcome to the show mr. Phillips how are you I'm doing great thank you for having me no no problem at all so thank you for being our recent sponsor we appreciate it and um, you are helping us to you know continue to give the the show and coaching advice and and all of that to the community so we definitely appreciate your support very welcome very welcome and i have to say we have a we have a long standing relationship how long have we known each other we've <laughs> That is a very good question. A, a, a lot of years. A lot of years lot without of years. dating ourselves. Um, so we've had a good working relationship over the years. So um, now, what do you want to talk about this week? I know you're going through a transition. So tell me all about it. Well, as you're aware, you know I'm moving forward and have several professions, several hats that I wear. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this particular case, uh, moving forward in the law practice and uh, stepping out on a so as a solo practitioner, you know, as any other business, we have our uh, obstacles and challenges. Well. And Welcome. challenges, is, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, challenges uh, uh, galore, as they would say. Um, but you know, like a lot of other businesses, I, I think uh, a lot of people don't realize, even as an attorney, uh, that we deal with the complicated issues, the difficult clients, uh, and, and I think one thing that I wanted to talk about today, and of course, uh, obtain some of your prefer professional advice is in reference to, uh, you know, the once you're hired, sometimes you deal with a client that uh, seems to know more than you know. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> now, that's a subject I would love to delve in, but this is going to get us, we're going to go at it with this one. So, before we delve delve into that please because I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to Absolutely. tell um, our listeners about who you are what you do what kind of law you practice and how to reach you because it's about to get ugly in here <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh, I go by Al Phillips but my full name is Altarian Phillips um, I practice construction real estate uh, personal injury as well as as well as wills and trusts uh, I am I'm also a licensed building contractor uh, my career started off in construction uh, mm -hmm. a lot of renovation and new construction work and moved on to uh, go to law school in the evenings and now a uh, full-time practicing attorney Fantastic. Uh, so uh, anyone can reach me my number 561-543-1454 or you're welcome to visit my website at www.ap-law.net Okay, fantastic. So now that we've gotten the housekeeping details out of the way, this is a very exciting topic. Um, so how do you vet clients to make sure that you're picking the right clients so that the, they're, they don't become more costly um, one in the amount of time in managing you know the clients and making sure now as a business professional um, your ROI your return on investment is um, going to be on the positive side <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we all hope for. Uh, after, of course, a client comes in for initial consultation and you're sitting down and you're speaking with that client and trying to understand their case, you should be asking those important questions to also get a feel for uh, what your client's personality is like. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell a lot about a person by the way they respond to your questions and how they approach you uh, in speaking with you and if they allow you to speak and they listen during the times when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. um, these are important important skills that of course are developed over time uh, and the more clients that you interview the better that you will become in vetting out your clients but as I said before even as a attorney practicing attorney you cannot always 100 percent of the time vet out those clients that may be a uh, cost more revenue uh, than they help bring in right. um, but you have to learn to work with them mm -hmm. uh, and always make that client feel that they're the only one and they're very important but you you know we get back to the subject of how do you vet that client well you know in the center we've developed a needs analysis we have it written out um, we have sat down we've put some thought in it we share it with our clients um, and it speaks to their motivation their timeline um, are they the um, 
the deciding factor or are they just vetting you for their boss or for the owner or someone else? Are they capable of making decisions? Um, so we actually have a needs analysis that we give to each client because promise you I have been on <laughs> the not so nice end of this um, frequently over my 15 years in business uh, you know as, as you know I do commercial real estate as well it's it's another one of my endeavors and this is very it has been crucial to time management in my time in the real estate business and I have to tell you that sometimes they take a, a little bit of a step back in terms of answering this very detailed questionnaire and I say to them well this is going to help me serve you better because the more I know about you, your wants, your desires, your likes, your needs, your timeline, your budget, etc., um, the better I'm going to be able to serve you. And it is a red flag for those who do not want to help you to serve them better. <laughs> you know? I, I will agree. The one thing I found, though, is that in, in the practice is that a lot of times the clients will come in and you give them the form to fill out, and mm -hmm. by the time you come, down, come in to sit down and speak with them, you find out that they skipped over 90% of the questions because they mm -hmm. want to talk. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's the part when you're sitting there and you're trying to read and understand what their issue is about mm -hmm. and they just they just want to talk yeah and, and, and some of that is going to be part of doing business some yeah. of it because this is their opportunity to tell their story to tell their story to someone who is sympathetic to their story mm -hmm. so sometimes you will have to allow yeah. them to vent yeah. um, but at no time do I allow that form not to be completed um, I, I keep bringing them back to that needs analysis it's it's fundamental it, it really is to saving time managing your time um, and I liken it to listen your time as an attorney is your highest and best use you know if you need to get them a psychiatrist to vet a little bit more than you need to do that what what are you you know what is your profession how they need to let you do your job you know um, so I, I do not allow a client and in the instances where I have I allow a client not to complete that needs analysis um, I have regretted it wow. and, and I think that goes to even for the listeners as well as myself how long do you push the point of trying to get a client to fill out those forms mm -hmm. before you just kind of say okay this is uh, not time efficient for me I, I need to move forward I need to uh, push this client through uh, and, and get the facts out so I can understand their case and be able to describe to them if we are able to take the case or not is there like a time limit you would associate? Well what I've done in the past is I've also even just taken the form myself asked the question and recorded the answer um, so I've played an, an admin in that role um, and so it seems to them that it's part of the interview process for them coming on board as a new client so if they're resistant to filling it out themselves I incorporate it and I'm not sure if you I have a one hour free coaching session um, or needs analysis development session with a client which each of my clients that come in that's something that's available to them at GBDC so I use that hour wisely um, I yes the venting process yes you know um, the commiseration happens but um, if it's something where they look at the form ooh, you know deer in the headlights then I make it part of the process and complete it myself by asking the questions so it looks like we have to go to break um, and um, when we get back we will continue this because I think how do you hire the right clients and when do you fire the wrong clients is something that I'd like to touch as part of that question as well absolutely okay thank you the Greater South Florida Chamber invites you to participate in Florida's largest expo ever on Saturday, May 17th at Meisner Park Amphitheater from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The largest health and wealth business expo and home show will take place. Membership marketing tables packages are still available. Please call Mark or Rob at 954-580-8802 or fax them at 954-580-8803. The event will be located at Meisner Park Amphitheater, 590 Plaza Real, Boca Raton, 33432. 
come and be part of history as the Greater South Florida Chamber invites you to participate and learn from the largest expo ever. For more information, call 954-580-8802 and ask for Mark or Rob. Global Business Development Center is a one-stop shop boutique firm specializing in services for public and private organizations, small businesses, and entrepreneurs looking to establish, grow, or improve their profit margin. The organization is primarily dedicated to help clients explore new markets, as well as startup and expansion opportunities by providing training, support services, funding, and business development resources. Call today. 561-894-4500 or visit our website www.globalbusinessdevelopmentcenter.com We provide products for business owners at every stage of business development from idea feasibility through startup, growth, and expansion. We use state-of-the-art technology including webinars as well as video and phone conferencing to meet the needs of our clients globally. Call today 561-894-4500 and get your business started in the right direction. Altrion Phillips, Esquire, a Florida licensed building contractor and attorney. Mr. Phillips has taken his vast construction experience and applied it to the practice of law. Since being admitted to the Florida Bar in 2009, he has focused his practice to the areas of personal injury, construction, and real estate matters. He has committed himself to represent his clients vigorously to bring resolution to their matter, whether in the courtroom or through negotiation. Al has represented clients against municipalities and large corporations. He has successfully worked with evictions, with HOA and condo association matters. Altrion Phillips, Esquire, looks forward to the opportunity to speak with you about your matter. Call today 561-543-1454 or visit his website at www.ap-law.net. That's 561-543-1454 and let Altereon Phillips help your project succeed. Welcome back to Kiss My Biz where we have another business owner on the hot seat. If you can't stand the heat, don't get in the kitchen. Our good cop, bad cop duo continues to challenge today's business owners to take on the 21st century business world fearlessly. Now, back to our show. Welcome back to the Kiss My Biz show. This is Annette Gray, your bad cop. You're listening to us. Hopefully at www.globalbusinessdevelopmentcenter.com. You can also call us with any questions or comments at 888-565-1470. And my guest today is Attorney Alteron Phillips, and we're talking about some just a very interesting topic. And before break, we we asked the question: When do we hire the white clients, and when we do we fire the wrong clients? What is your take? I, I have to say I love the way that you phrased that. It is the premier question of a business person. You are hiring that client. You, you believe that the client comes in and hire you, and uh, when a client comes in and takes control of your time, your your your, your the things that they want you to do, uh, that becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you have to, uh, like we were saying before, vet your clients and initially and determine which client is best for you to hire mm -hmm. and and sometimes when you're moving forward you do have to determine which client is it best to let go oh, absolutely. Uh, if they're causing you uh, to go down uh, and you're seeing that your services are not being of a benefit uh, me speaking from a legal profession that could be very costly for you um, so you have to make that determination when you're sitting there and you're sitting you you, you have the ability to as we would like to use the word click mm -hmm. with uh, those that you're interviewing those clients that you can work with because you have to understand you're developing a relationship of working with someone so if you don't have the ability to work with that person and you're going to be uh, colliding and all your thoughts, your ideas, everything that's being put forward, mm -hmm. that's not a good relationship to be in. Uh, so yeah. we have to decide what client is best for us to hire uh, when we're looking forward to move forward uh, in a business relationship. It is that a relationship. It is actually, that's a good point. It is a relationship and in, in your profession sometimes it's a short relationship but sometimes it's it's a long-term relationship over time because of the, the nature of the case or you know the legal foundation of, of what that client is seeking to have done. You know, I, I say uh, quite often at the center, um, I, I, a lot of people come through my doors and they have been burned. Mm -hmm. um, and in their mind, because they're the client, 
uh, it, they have been done wrong. They've been done wrong or they've been harmed by the professional. And often after spending a little bit of time with mm -hmm. that client, I understand a little bit more about the dynamics of the relationship um, because we've been taught the customer is always right. And I am sorry to say that that is not always true. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it is not always true. Um, it is especially not true when there are moral and ethical boundaries that uh, we do just simply not agree on. And I'm not going to represent you if I don't have the ability to champion your cause wholeheartedly because I believe in what you're trying to do. Um, we say we're dream builders at GBDC. Um, we have clients come in with horrible business ideas all the time. They're just bad. There is no other way to say it. But I don't tell them that's a bad, horrible idea. I use that needs analysis um, and help them come to that realization on their own. And, you know, if if they don't come to that realization, I simply say, you know, I just don't think we're a good fit for you. I am not going to be able to write a business plan or a strategic plan around this idea um, because we don't see where it's going to be the best um, effort for your resources and your retirement monies. And, you know, some people come in and start businesses and their livelihood, they've worked for years. Um, and save these funds and so you know we're not dream killers we're dream builders but we do find a way to try and come across and say listen it's a it's not a good idea <laughs> have them come to that realization themselves well one point I want to touch on too that I think was great that you just brought up is about moral and ethical values mm -hmm. and unfortunately you can't really gauge that on a one hour initial consultation right. mm -hmm. and a lot of times what we run into a, a, a lot of people are not aware but litigation can go on three four years right so while we're building this relationship you're going to learn a lot about that person's moral or ethical values and there becomes times mm -hmm. when we are in the middle of litigation and we find out something that uh, you know, your your client is supposed to be open and honest with you. Right. You, what you tell your attorney is between you and your attorney. Mm -hmm. So we, in order for us to be prepared, we have to know. Well, the worst thing to happen is is when you're not open, you're not morally honest, you're not eth your eth your ethics are not uh, forthcoming. Right. And we find out at the wrong time. Oh yes, uh, recently we we prepared a business plan uh, for a client, and the, the business plan was for funding. Um, only to find out when we're packaging the funding package that she hadn't paid her taxes in six years, <laughs> and there was an IRS lien, um, and and some other things that was going to prevent her from getting a loan anytime soon, you know, um, well. which had huge <laughs> impact on her credit and some things like that. So you know. The disclosure, it's one of those times when I said, oh, that information can come, you know, complete this, the loan package information when we're finished with the business plan. And even after 15 years, I still made make that error in judgment, thinking that someone would disclose that at the beginning of a relationship. Well, the best part is when a client looks at you and says, was that important? <laughs> Yes. Right. You know, it's a little hurdle. You can get over that. Let's not focus on that. You know, but right? Because I am major. paying you, and, yeah. and this is where my miracles cannot be bought. <laughs> I think that's a very good saying. <laughs> <laughs> Although some people do believe that miracles can yes. happen, and I do have to fault and say sometimes on TV we see things happen, especially in the legal profession. Sure, some of the commercials oh. that you see, uh, you know, everyone feels if you're in an accident, you can uh, be able to be compensated, you know, millions of dollars. It's just not so. But those are the things, like you said, that everything's important. You right. have to be forthcoming. Let that professional that you're hiring uh, help you discern what is what's relevant and what's not. So that that they can be able to work in your best interest and it's very important to be forthcoming. And I'm sure this happens to you quite a bit. Um, people come in with their own case even though they're not an attorney, they're not trained in the legal profession, they come in with their case already determined how, because you know, their mother-in-law and their friends and you know, the neighbors said, you know, this is the way it should go. <laughs> and so now you're telling them what is possible within the realms of the law. How do you handle that? Well, y y we have to deal with society law, as we will call it. Okay. It's, um, like you stated, it's the mother, it's the uncle, it's the father. It says, hey, I've been through that. Mm -hmm. I know how this goes. I understand the law. Well, 
law changes mm -hmm. and, and if you're not up to date on it uh, you will be behind very quickly and you'll find out things the hard way and I use for example uh, part of my practice deals with foreclosure mm -hmm. and I had a client that he uh, they went in and they purchased property at a foreclosure sale from a HOA sale and they figured everybody should have been wiped or all their liens should have been dissolved. Okay. Well, lo and behold, you have a first mortgage holder, a lien holder, who's the bank, and they say, no, you know, there's a $600,000 lien on this property. Well, you just bought a property at a foreclosure sale. You feel you own it outright just to find out. You just went in debt $600,000. Wow. It's not assuming what you think you know. Right. But taking the time to talk to that professional before. and get the proper understanding before and it's very important very the timing before before very important so we've talked a bit about hiring the right clients mm -hmm. let's talk about how we fire the wrong clients um, we have a standard I, I am one of the things I do at GBDC is our contracts are no more than six months long um, and we have um, out clauses on both sides because one I don't one I need an escape clause myself if we weren't able to discern those moral and ethical values and issues up front and those issues are um, determined later on in the relationship uh, so that's one of the things I mean I, I see people that have contracts that hold people hostages um, for you know number of years um, and it, it's doing yourself a disservice as well because you think you're holding on to that client but that client is also holding on to you via this legal document that's one of the first thing that we do and the second thing I do I always fire clients in person not via written communication text email letter I, I have a chat with them about why it is not a good fit and why we're not able to continue the relationship so do you have any tips on that oh absolutely I think you should always as you stated uh, meet in person and after you meet in person I think you should follow up with a letter uh, is very important because you don't want that misunderstanding right. there's two parties sitting there and hopefully it's a mutual uh, consensual uh, um, amicable uh, meeting right. where you're sitting down with level heads and having a conversation but you follow up with a letter so that you both understand at the end of the day you sit down you can read it you can understand mm -hmm. the reason why this relationship is, is separating okay. uh, and also it, it also gives a benefit to the person your client that you're firing they can go to the next professional right. if they choose to look for someone else mm -hmm. and when you're having that, that that vetting process and they say hey did you fire did you hire anybody else or did were you working with anyone else mm -hmm. you can hand them that letter so that you know what the next professional is, is prepared and can understand the reason why you may not have worked well with right with the absolutely other that's so, a great point yeah. I like that I think I'll incorporate that as well so it's been 30 minutes <laughs> I am just going to ask you one more time, just tell uh, the folks, our listeners, how to reach you. I want to thank you for coming on the show, and thank you for sponsoring the show. Um, you've always been a great supporter of mine. I want to take the opportunity to thank you publicly for that, personally and professionally. Um, and I do value our relationship both personally and professionally. Um, so just give your phone, phone number and website again, and then... We'll call it a show. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. Glad to be here. Once again, my phone number, 561-543-1454. Or you can go to my website at www.ap-law.net. Thank you. Fantastic. Looking forward to having you back. Thank you. Well, guys, that's it. That's our show this week. Um, have a wonderful week, and we will see you same time, same bad channel next Monday. You've been listening to... Kiss My Biz, your weekly reality business show, where each week a business owner joins our good cop and bad cop duo looking for real but informative business solutions and resources to grow your business. Tune in again next time for more Kiss My Biz. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Altrion Phillips, Esquire, a Florida licensed building contractor and attorney. Mr. Phillips has taken his vast construction experience and applied it to the practice of law. Since being admitted to the Florida Bar in 2009, he has focused his practice to the areas of personal injury, construction, and real estate matters. He has committed himself to represent his clients vigorously to bring resolution to their matter, whether in the courtroom or through new